Hello and welcome to another video of mine. So today we shall have a look at the Pentax K2. You might wonder why I have chosen this camera when I have so many others that I could do a review on. Well, um, I kind of I kind of like underdogs, ugly ducklings, cameras that failed for some reason or are not well regarded. And so um, the Pentax K2 always intrigued me a bit, but uh, Destiny uh, has put this one in my hands, another one, and there is even a third one that I have for Spirits. So if Destiny has wanted me to have a Pentax K2 in abundance, it must mean that I should get to know the camera better. And so today I'm here to um, share with you my thoughts about the Pentax K2. So historically it is an, a relevant camera because this is 1975 and Pentax uh, launched a bayonet mount to replace the old M42 mount of the Pentax Spotmatic models. So in 1975 they launched three cameras, the K2, the KM and the KX. While the KM and KX were mechanical cameras, which were nothing than uh, rebotted Spotmatics, this one was electronic. There was an electronic version of the Spotmatic, which was the ES and ES2, but this one technically is different. Anyway, so it is an important camera because it features the all new then back then Pentax K mount that as you know would become rather famous because of it was an open source mount as we say now it was open to everybody and so lots of uh, independent manufacturers made lenses for it and it was adopted by some ma camera manufacturers as well like Ricoh, Shimon, Cosina etc. Well Let's then start, as usual, by comparing the Pentax. For those of you who don't know the model, um, uh, in, real for, in real life, so um, let's pick up some cameras so that you may have an idea of its size and design compared to other cameras. So this is the Pentax Spotmatic. Seems fair to start with it since it was the model, the last Spotmatic uh, built. Um, and you see that in terms of width, they are exactly the same, but the Spotmatic is taller and seems bigger. The K2 um, has the same engravings in white. It looks also handsome, I think, with the serial number engraved, the model number engraved, that Azai, lovely Azai Pentax stamped in the prism. But the Spotmatic is by no means a compact camera. I've also have here the Canon FTB, which is also a common camera that you might know. And compared to the FTB, the K2 is not as wide, not as tall, so it's a much smaller camera. But again, the FTB is not exactly a very compact camera. <laughs> I've also bought, uh, brought sorry, um, an Icon, in this case the FM2, that did not exist at the time, but the FM existed in 1977, so it was um, a colleague of the Pentax in the market and the, the body is the same so in terms of um, reference it will have to do for now so today I'm in a black body mode I don't have a black FM just a silver one so I chose the FM2 now the FM2 is basically the same width it's slightly less tall it seems smaller, slightly smaller than the Pentax, but that's due to the um, design of the camera, the prism, etc. The Pentax has a rather 
serious and perhaps not so light design. I mean, it's a very uh, angled design, and that adds uh, eight, uh, weight sorry, to the perception of the camera when looking at the camera. Very well, let's have a look then at the features of the Pentax and the Pentax K2 in itself. Well, in terms of controls implementation, it seems fairly classical, it seems. So you have a large and comfortable shutter dial here that has a lock in one position which says automatic in green. So it says automatic because this is an aperture priority camera in terms of exposure, meaning that you set the aperture and the camera will automatically set the speed, the shutter speed for you. This also means that this camera has to use batteries in order to operate opposite to Spotmatics, but not opposite to the Spotmatic ES or ES2 that were also electronic cameras that required a battery to operate, although they had also mechanical shutter speeds, some mechanical shutter speeds. In order to have access to manual selection of the shutter speeds, you have to depress this button, just like in some Nikons, and you have all the standardized speeds from one thousandth of a second up to one second, but Pentax did more. So they decided to add three extra speeds, and that's two seconds, four seconds, and eight seconds which is rather unusual. You can find it in some cameras, old cameras, like the uh, Nikon F2, which is a mechanical camera, the Zacta, um, which is a mechanical camera. Uh, I think the, the Roiflex SL35E uh, also has um, slow shutter speeds that are manually available that go beyond one second there is after this one more recent cameras like some Ricos and Shinon that have uh, but not all the way to eight seconds so this is something that was not very normal to find so an applause for Pentax when I said that this camera was electronic and did need batteries in order to operate, I have to say that it also has three mechanical shutter speeds in case that your batteries run out or the camera becomes faulty. So Pentax fitted three mechanical speeds which are one thousandth of a second, one twenty-fifth of a second, which is the synchronizing speed for flash, and B. So it's a, a very good range because for an SOS situation it, it really is just what you need to uh, get on with your shooting in let's say 90% of the situation especially if you have a, a very bright lens like this one. So anyway it's very nice it's much better than nothing. You might argue that the Spotmatic ES2 had mechanical uh, shutter speeds from 1 60th, I believe, up to 1,000th of a second. That's true. But it did not have any manual speeds from 1 60th of a second below. Well, here is the hot shoe, which has no connection whatsoever for uh, exposure or information on flash recycling or an anything of the sort. This is the rewind crank, so very classical. This is the shutter button here, surrounded by a lock, a locking collar, just like the Spotmatic, which looks very familiar, but it's not the same design. 
and there's an advanced lever and the camera is a bit um, noisy really it's um, the advanced system is smooth but it's not as uh, silent as the one you can find in Spotmatics. Here at the back this is the uh, film holder reminder so that you may know what film you are using. This is the battery check here so it means that you have enough power. Power here is delivered by two LR44 batteries of 1.5 volts so very cheap and readily available and this is the pissing socket for bulb and flash. There's no provision for a motor drive at least in the, this early model. There was however a much rare version that had provision for a, a special winder or motor drive if you want to call it. Good. Looking at the front of the camera we have here a button that is the depth of field preview, which is very useful. This is the self timer. This is the button to release the bayonet from the lens, or the lens bayonet, but it's still. And this is an important feature that was absent for, from, from the Spotmatics, which is mirror lockup. Mirror lockup was very common in the 60s because cameras would have vibrating shutters, most of them. And so um, many cameras have had it. The Canon FTB, for instance, had it. Uh, the Nikomats had it. The OM1 from Olympus had it, but not the OM2. Um, so by 1975, it was very rare to find this in a, in a camera. It was becoming rarer and rarer also because of cost, also because um, shutter vibration was uh, being improved. So um, this shows that the um, Pentax K2 was aimed at the more expensive part of the market because of all these characteristics. You may wonder now if I have forgotten how we set the as a speed for the meter or if, if there is one at all so it would be really uh, right to think so because that's the worst part of this camera for some reason Pentax people had this you know genius idea of being terribly original probably after drinking too much sake and decided to put the ISO setting or as a setting in one of the most dreadful places that one could think of and coupled it to the exposure compensation in the same place and well you better see it to believe it. So Pentax decided to be really funky and original just like Olympus but instead of putting the shutter speeds here, they decided to put the as a setting. And there are two rings that turn independently from one another, or at the same time. There was supposed to be a plastic part here and lock them if you wish. Most of them are missing that part. The other K2 that I have also is missing that plastic bit. And so you have, um, you select your ASA speed here from 8 ASA to 6400, which is a lot and very uncommon for a camera of this age. But as this ring is coupled to exposure compensation, you ju just have a travel or a stroke of four stops. If you want to go any further, you have to turn the ring that is closer to the body 
and then turn the other ring again to have access to more four speeds. Again, if I want to go to all the way to 600 and 400, I have to do that. This is really stupid, in my opinion. This is completely... Yeah. It's true that we don't use this um, as much as uh, we think we do. But um, anyway, it's really, really not a good system. And I fail to see any logic of this, any advantage. Uh, I think this, the, the system that was in the ES around the uh, rewind crank was much simpler, much nicer. But the worst is still to come. On this side, you've got exposure compensation, and it's linked to the ASA setting, of course. And so you have the neutral position where there is no compensation, and it's written in white, it's all very good, and the rest is filled with orange paint, which is also very good. The problem is, let me put the lens, Where's the reference point when you look at the camera? Well, it's there. There's this microscopic, tiny red dot. There's this big dot, which serves as a reference to mount the bayonet. Uh, and then, at the same alignment, you've got this microscopic dot. That is the reference for exposure compensation. This is really something completely idiotic in my opinion because I, I, I really if I know that this ring is not working as it was supposed to because it should lock but it doesn't because it's missing something inside but anyway even if it locked I really had no idea if it was in no exposure compensation setting or with exposure compensation so it's really um, it's, it's horrible. I'm looking at it and I already don't know where the damn red dot is. I suppose it's there. So, um, this is really uh, a shame. It's a horrible, horrible system. It's true that we don't use it that much, perhaps, but it is something that possibly helped to kill uh, the camera. And of course, when people find something um, wrong, let's say, or unpleasant in a camera, they amplify the problem. So I'm not saying that this is not a problem, but uh, it's a terrible idea. But at least these commands, uh, we don't change in film uh, the other setting as much as we do in digital. Um, there, there is no such, you, know, you really don't have a choice between 600 and 400, 6,000 and 400 as a films and something in between and th there's not that type of choice anymore. So that wasn't, that isn't really a problem. Most people stick to uh, 100, 200, 400, 800 as and that's it. And we don't keep changing during pi picture taking. So, but still, it is not a very good system. It's, it's I'm being euphemistical, it is a terrible system. Anyway, so here's the remark. If you use exposure compensation a lot, or if you are into changing uh, ISOs real uh, many times, then this one, this Pentax, is not for you. Good. So after beating the Pentax really bad, let's see other more pleasant things and those are what what we can see so uh, the, the viewfinder is uh, quite big actually it shows 95% of the picture image and it's about the same in quality as the Spotmatic F um, it's fairly bright at least with the 1.4 lens it's um, not as good as the ME M series, notably the ME Super, which is the only camera that I have. Um, it's not as good. It's not as big. But um, comparing it with other cameras, so it's in the same class as Canon's FTB, as the Spotmatic, 
so it's not something it's not bad um, quite the opposite but it's not the best either on the left you have a scale with all the speeds available so you have from one thousandth of a second right to eight seconds and there is a needle that tells you the approximate shutter speed that the camera will fire in manual mode you have an extra um, needle which is a lot thicker and green it shouldn't be really because it means out, uh, manual mode not auto mode but so that needle shows you what shutter speed you have selected manually while the other needle remains active because it is connected to the aperture system so uh, you have to match both needles in order to uh, to have um, correct exposure in manual mode if this sounds complicated it is more complicated than to have a, a plus and a minus but it is basically the same system that um, is used in the ME Super or uh, with LEDs you select one manual speed and there's still another LED that lights up um, as the camera was still in manual mode so you have to um, coincide both of them if you want to have a correct exposure so the system is basically the same but it's done with needles not with LEDs well and to end this tour of the Pentax K2, let's look at the inside of the camera. It is fairly well finished, it's uh, Pentax after all, and you can see the vertical run shutter. And this is the main difference between this camera and all the K-mount cameras is having a vertical run shutter and to make room for this you really need to do a lot a lot of changes to the Pentax Spotmatic body so I'm not really sure if the body is the same in the end but that's not important in the end the question is is it worth to buy the K2 for a good price uh, I would say yes, because it has another trick up its sleeve, like all other Pentaxes, Yashikas, Practicas, which is the ability to use M42 mount lenses. So, we'll put this K2 here, and we shall have a look at the other K2 that I have here. So this one is fitted with a Pentacon M42 mount lens because there is an adapter. And the cameras were thought out from the very beginning to be used with an adapter for M42 mount lenses. So you get aperture priority with stop-down metering in a Pentax body that can use both K mount lenses and M42 mount lenses. So in my opinion, this beats a lot the hell of a Zenit camera. If you want a good body with closed down metering, then you have here a choice. One of many, of course. So the camera is not only, let's say, um, you are not compelled to use just K mount lenses, you can also use M42 mount lenses. So if I was given the choice between using a Zenit and this with closed down metering, then I will tell you that there is absolutely no hesitation whatsoever. This would make a much better body, this or just about any other camera. So the Pentax K2 just like the KM or the KX or the ME Super, MV, whatever. They have this versatility because they have kept their compatibility with their past, in this case, with the M42 mount. So um, you might 
be interested if you have some old lenses might be interested to know that you can use them in um, any Pentax K mount uh, camera actually but today we are using the Pentax K2 I forgot a minute ago to comment on the viewfinder when I was uh, talking about the viewfinder there is a difference this one which is uh, an early camera because it has a serial number of 6000 and something has a plain micro prism focusing system only just a spotmatic and um, this one which is has a higher serial number this is in the region of uh, 36000 has a split image rangefinder so they did some modifications to the camera or like the manual says um, the viewfinder was the viewfinder screen was customizable i suppose that we must understand that as it could be changed by an authorized dealer so this is what i wanted to add before i forget so there are some differences or there might have you might find some differences between k2 cameras and my friends this is what i had to say about the pentax k2 in my opinion it's not an ugly duckling it's not an ugly camera it's not possibly the best camera ever it's not possibly the best pentax ever but um, between this and the NEM mount camera um, there are many differences so you get the depth of field preview the mirror lockup something that no M camera um, was fitted with and you get this serious build all in metal but you do also get the weight and the size so they're not really uh, comparable perhaps this is a really a camera from 1975 it um, made no really advanced didn't advance camera technology didn't really bring anything new to photography but hey not everybody uh, comes with new things and is regarded with success Nikon with their F2 and F3 were not exactly pioneers at anything and still the cameras are highly regarded anyway these were the 26 minutes of fame for the Pentax K2 a camera that um, I'm not here to recommend or to disencourage anyone just to tell you that it might not be as horrible as you think it is it might not be the ugly duckling that people say that it is and it might be a choice for you to consider if you find one cheap enough this one was really really cheap the other one was given and as the other one that I have for parts only so they are really unloved at least this is my experience with them thank you for watching and I hope to see you very soon in another video of mine.